Snake Pass is an interesting game to me. It's a game that's both familiar yet innovative, flawed but fun, quirky yet understandable. In a lot of ways, it's a game that is clearly influenced by games from the past like Banjo-Kazooie, yet it tends to forge its own path along the way. What's interesting is that this game's been out for more than a year now, and it, I haven't, didn't play it until just recently, finally getting it on my Nintendo Switch. Regardless of which console you play it on, this review will be a comprehensive review for the game. I'm going to delve right into it. So, the snake, the titular snake, Noodle, is woken by his bird friend, only to find out that their habitat has been severely damaged, and the gate to the many realms have all been damaged as well. Therefore, Noodle and his bird friend have to slither and climb the way up poles, through poles, underwater, in order to collect these very bright golden gems in order to fix the gates and get to the next realm. The story is very simple and basic, but let's face it, they usually are in platformers. Presentation-wise, this is a very impressive game for the kind of game that it is. Suda Digital's indie game uses Unreal Engine 4, and it is very impressive. The environments are crisp and clean, and they look very organic. Here you have one of my favorite levels and stages in the game, the lava level. As you can see, I just love the colors, the black and red for this particular stage. This is also one of the few stages that actually looks a little bit different than a lot of the other ones, which is probably why I like it. But also, you can see just how crisp and clean everything looks. I know this doesn't do it justice, it looks a heck of a lot better when you're actually playing it on your screen. But, this was just my recording of it. But just look look at the grass, look at the detail that Suda Digital managed to put into their game. It truly is very impressive indeed. But what stands out the most to me are the character models. Noodle, I, I honestly hate snakes. Like, are you gonna take me to the zoo? Like, I would not want to go near a snake. But yet, Noodle's like actually adorable. I'm not even kidding. Like, his, just his, his face, the way he moves, his, even his grunts are just like, ah, Like, I don't know how they did it. And it's just so, he's such a charming protagonist. And the bird too. Now, the environments themselves can get a little repetitious, given that the game is a little bit short, but that's not really a big deal. But the big thing about this game that really makes it stand out to me is that David Wise, the David Wise who composed the Donkey Kong Country games, did the music for this game. And it is brilliant. He manages to make music that's both ambient and catchy at once. And I really love the work he did in this game. Snake Pass game. I feel like he's sort of been making a comeback in recent years since he did the music for Donkey Kong Country, Tropical Freeze, and now Snake Pass. I hope he keeps doing video game compositions because I love his music. And in this music, like, I still have the music in my head right now for this game. I just, it's, it really is really good. Overall, the presentation for the kind of game that it is, is really solid. Though the controls did feel a little bit unintuitive at first, it's clear that Suma Digital was trying to replicate the actual movements of a serpent. I did some recording while I was playing the game on my gamepad, and I'm going to demonstrate how the controls work. I know not all of my words will be matching the actions of what the character is doing, but hopefully the visual will at least give you a good idea of how the controls work. So I'm controlling Noodle with the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, so you're going to want to use the joystick. You're going to want to move right and left to get Noodle to build up speed and momentum. Now you can, of course, use your camera with using the joystick on the bottom right end of the controller. Now you're going to want to, in order to move your Noodle's head, you're going to want to press the A button to get Noodle to move up. And in order to wrap yourself around poles and attach them more properly, you're going to want to get close to them and press the ZL button to sort of constrict yourself like a boa constrictor, as you can see Noodle's doing here. You can then use a mix of that and the A button in order to build momentum and get yourself to the next area. Now, you can also press the Y button to get the bird to pick up the end of Noodle's tail, which will give him a little bit more mobility in certain areas of the game, especially when you're in the more fiery sections or if you're trying to manipulate the wind to get you to certain places. Now, the controls definitely have a very physics-based feel to them, and uh, Noodle definitely controls like a snake. As I'll say again, the controls did feel a little awkward at first, but then you remember that Suda Digital was really trying to replicate the movements of a snake, and in that sense, the controls are very realistic. And overall, they work really well. 
The game is very physics-based in its platforming and, frankly, very organic in um, environmental. Like, as, as Noodle, you'll be climbing up all these different poles, you'll be climbing through, through the poles as well, you'll be, like, sort of using your, really, your serpentine abilities. It's unlike most platformers where you're an ape or a hedgehog or a plumber, this game you're a snake, so you're not jumping, you're slithering. And you have to really think like a snake would think and move like a snake would move in order to figure out the mechanics of the game. Now, honestly, I feel like my first playthrough of this game was almost just like figuring out how all the mechanics work and sort of getting myself in that different mindset. And once, once it happened, a lot of it did click. Now, that's not to say that the game is perfect. The controls themselves can feel a little wonky at first, especially near the end of the game. And my other big issue is that the difficulty of the game definitely ramps up quite a bit, especially two-thirds of the way, which I'll talk about in my negative section. Overall, though, once I got the hang of it, it made a lot of sense. And I was able to have a lot of fun just figuring out how Noodle, as a snake, copes with his environment, and how does he get from one place to another. Do you use your long torso to constrict yourself on the poles and attach yourself to things, whether it be moving windmills, do you, um, how, how do you man manage to move through all these uh, fiery terrains without falling into the pit of fire, as it were? And what's good about this game is that there aren't really any game overs. When you fall, you'll just start back at the last checkpoint. And believe me, you will fall a lot. And sometimes it feels like it's your own player error. Other times it feels as though it's somewhat flawed game mechanics. Overall, though... The gameplay is flawed, but it's still a lot of fun, and I would love to see them refine this even more in a sequel. This is a surprising amount of replay value for a game that's relatively short. The levels themselves might appear small, but they're surprisingly open-ended and non-linear. You can get the gems in any order you want, you can even find different ways to get up to them. Furthermore, there's a lot of experimentation in this game, especially with regard to the physics and how Noodle moves. Um, also, like any good platformer, of course, there's a time trial mode and an arcade mode, which I have had a lot of fun doing, where you get Noodle to just eat as much fruit as he can and get to the end of the stage and get as many points as possible. And, of course, there's a leaderboard. So, there's, there's some good reason to go back to this game. I, myself, have actually gone back and played it quite a bit. All right. Negatives for this game. All right, so, Snake Pass, obviously is something that hasn't really been done a lot before. There aren't really a whole lot of games like it, and it does have some pretty glaring flaws. Be I mean, it is the first kind of game like it that I've played, but even still, there are some aspects of the game that I feel need a lot of tweaking or fixing. Um, the controls, like I said, overall, once you get the hang of them, they work, but there are some instances in the game where the controls feel a little wonky. Like, Areas later on in the game where I was on a pole and I was trying to reverse Noodle's direction so that he'd go in the other direction. But instead of going all the way in the other direction, he'd move his head slightly and then he'd start to go back. And it would just cause me to keep falling. And it would get really frustrating. The other big issue with this game is the fact that the difficulty spikes tremendously two-thirds of the way through the game. Now, difficulty spiking isn't a bad thing. But like games like Donkey Kong and Banjo Kazooie managed to so elegantly uh, make it have the progression and difficulty. Uh, Snake Pass doesn't quite do that. Uh, Snake Pass uh, it just sort of drops drops the difficulty on you su very suddenly two thirds of the way through the game. And for me, it was kind of hard to adapt because I didn't really have a lot of context for getting to that harder difficulty. It's sort of like going from a 25 pound dumbbell to an 85 pound dumbbell in like a second. It doesn't really work. The difficulty and the occasionally wonky control schemes are things that might throw some players off and might might turn a few players away. I was still able to enjoy the game overall despite some of these issues, but they are things that if they're going to make a sequel, they definitely need to sort out and fix a lot. At the end of the day, Snake Pass is a flawed but nonetheless pretty fun game. It does have some serious issues that I feel like hold it back from true greatness, like the occasionally wonky controls and, like I said, the difficulty spike that doesn't really 
make a lot of sense and doesn't really have a whole lot of context. It doesn't progress to that difficulty, is what I'm saying. Um, if you can look past those flaws, you might find a hidden gem of a platformer underneath. Pun intended. Uh, if Suda Digital were to make a sequel to this game and iron out the issues tremendously, make it a little bit longer, add more variety to levels, I think they could have something truly special. It's clear that this game is inspired by games of the past, but it truly does try to forge its or slither its own path. And if they could fix those issues with the game, they could have a game that shines as brightly as the gems in its levels. Overall, I'd recommend checking this game out if you haven't already. Just be forewarned of some of its issues, but also know that there's a lot of fun to be had as well. I'm happy to give Snake Pass a 4 out of 5. I'm giving this game the score I'm giving it because even though it does have a lot of serious issues to the game, the things that I enjoyed about it bring it up to the score I gave it, which is 4 out of 5. That said, I wouldn't give it a score any higher just because it does have those issues that hold it back from being a truly great game, but it's still, as it stands, a really good indie game and a really good first installment, which for what I hope there's going to be another one. Um, that said, thank you for watching my videos, and I'll see you later!